Hey guys, Dave Morelli here. Um, a couple of days ago, we went and pulled some traps. We'll go on to that here in a minute. And uh, then uh, we also went and got some firewood the other day, and we had some surprises on the road. And I'll show you that in a minute. I'm going to get these traps out of the truck and put them in the fix it and die pile. I'm going to have to be doing that pretty soon. Um, but what I want to get started today is uh, making uh, wax dirt. Normally, um, one of the ways that I made wax dirt for a long time is uh, I'd set out a sheet of plywood and I'd put my dirt down, oh, maybe an uh, inch deep, and then I would sprinkle the wax on it and then put a black plastic tarp over it so it wouldn't blow off and uh, let it cook. And then you come and you mix it up every once in a while and put a little more dirt in until it all melts into the dirt and you have a really nice uh, wax dirt mixture. And that works well if you live somewhere where the sun shines a lot. Um, usually I do it this time of the year because it's hot, but we've been having rain every other day and thunderstorms and a lot of wind and makes that uh, almost impossible. So this year I have a um, small miniature cement mixer type tool and uh, we're going to wax up some dirt in that. And let me get these unloaded and uh, sit down and have a cup of coffee and see how our, our pooling went and I'll be back with the mixer here in a minute. So anyway, it's one of my first sets. Uh, that I'm pulling out here, and uh, I got my trap puller here, stake puller. I built this, geez, probably 20 years ago. It has a, a rounded edge uh, that gives me a fulcrum. There's a notch for getting under the stake. The notch for getting under uh, cable. All steel construction. Uh, that makes pulling these stakes out a whole lot easier. And it's kind of heavy. It's not something you want to pack. So, I got my trap. I also got my bone. I'm going to go ahead and take my bone with me. Um, I like using these bones for scent. Uh, you can kind of hammer it in the ground. It's an attractor. And plus, you can put a little scent or lure inside the vertebrae column. It kind of protects it from the weather. Um, pulling this trap is one thing. The, the idea is why was this trap here well this is uh, in my opinion a better than any other spot to set a trap and the reason why is because there's coyotes running all over the place here and there's trails and stuff but what i try to do is set a trap that would be in a better spot that has more chances of coyotes passing through here and this is a crossway there's a trail that goes up through the sagebrush behind me and uh, right where the camera is sitting along here on the edge of the sagebrush it, it's an edge and it's an edge of high sagebrush into a pasture and also a ditch so whatever way a coyote enters here if he catches the trail he's going to come down the trail and he's going to come past here if he's working the edge which predators like to work edges and an edge could be the side of a road. It could be this edge here where there's sagebrush about this high and then pasture. Uh, so this is a better than average spot maybe for a coyote to cross over. And he has two ways that he's going to cross. Just over the hill there's a small creek. And so I always kind of figured with the tracks the coyotes would come down this trail and they'd kind of peek over to see if there's something they could ambush. And then also they can come down this trail and they can see this pasture without anybody seeing them if they're being sneaky. So uh, this was a good spot. It, it connected a few times over the years for me. We got another one right down here on the edge. I'm going to go check it out and, uh, and, and pull it out. makes it a lot easier 
like something packed my bone off. That's kind of why I like those ones that have the long spine on them. You can hammer them into the ground and because the coyotes will pack them off a ways. At least I got my screen back. Okay. Let's see. This is one of them ones. This one had gone around a rock. I'm trying to talk getting out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pin traps. We're done. Well, gotta go get some firewood today. One of the things about living out here is firewood's a necessity. Even getting firewood, don't up, give up the opportunity to pick up some coyote droppings on the road. They'll come in handy when we make our sets later. And if they're real dry, we can just uh, wet them up with a little bit of urine. And uh, they make great attractors uh, to your set. So I don't pass it up this time of year. I pick it all up. Black gold. All right, let's go get some wood. So, one of the things they tell you is try not to have any organic matter in your wax dirt. And uh, I just use this dirt right here in this gravel pit right on my plate because it's kind of what the dirt is around here, and it's good dirt. So they tell me you can use uh, sand. Now, instructions that come with the wax say sand is not good, but uh, where I got the idea to use the cement mixer to heat it, uh, that guy's been doing it with sand. This is cheaper. Sand costs, you know, a little bit of money, but then you don't have to do this, and it's not that expensive. Um, whether it works or not, I guess you have to try that yourself. Anyway, I'm going to get some more of these buckets filled up and sifted, and uh, we'll get back over to the shop and work on the work on getting that cement mixer set up. So. from Minnesota Trap Line Supply. I also like Cumberland uh, Trap Supply. They recommend three quarters of a cup of flake or I like this wax I got from Minnesota. It's kind of like little BBs, but either one works. I've used the flake. Um, 
I'm using my dye and wax burner to heat this. You heat the dirt up. You don't want it super hot. You want it warm enough to melt the wax. I use, I put five gallons of dirt in there. So basically five cups of wax. I go about a gallon uh, to one cup instead of three quarters. It's just easier to remember. Uh, you gotta watch it. You don't want it to get too hot. If it starts to get too hot, you gotta shut her down and let it run. Um, when all the wax is gone, that's why I like the, the BBs, because they come to the surface and as they get mixed in with the dirt, when they're gone, you're done. Dump it out, put whatever more in there you need and run it. Follow the instructions. Um, your burner can be the same burner you use for your, your uh, dye and wax boiling bucket. Um, I've got another burner that I could use is one of those propane blower heaters. It's a small one. You can put that on there. Uh, I've seen guys use their um, torch for starting fires in the field, you know, to get field burning, the torch that they use. There's all kinds of things. Whatever gets it warm. Uh, it doesn't have to be super hot, just warm and, and let her roll until it's done. Anyway, I'm going to uh, work on this and then uh, start getting my trap bucket together and I'm going to start cleaning them traps and start boiling and waxing. So stay with me. Um, we're going to set up the truck and, uh, and uh, see how I do it. I'm not trying to be an instructor here. All I'm trying to do is make something entertaining enough for you to watch. And maybe you can pick up an idea or two with me. Uh, other than that, I just want to have a little fun with it. So, anyway, I'll see you next time. We'll set up a trap bucket and set up a truck. Have a good day.